talking. I'd like to recognize my good friend, Mr. Grothman, for five minutes, please. Thank you. We're going to work our way for a question for Mr. Law, but we'll give a kind of a build up to the question. Uh, earlier this year on, on my subcommittee uh, um, regarding oversight, uh, at the time we learned the Biden administration had lost contact with almost 100,000 unaccompanied minors. However, the uh, director of Office of Refugee Resettlement didn't seem to know that. A shocking number of these children appear to be exploited by their sponsors. Uh, and they're forced to work to pay debts to their sponsors. I'm concerned the Biden administration is failing this vulnerable population. I mean, if a, if a minor comes across the board and they're across the border, they're unaccompanied by anybody. That that should be a real danger sign in the first place. Uh, but it appears that they've waived background checks and address verification requirements for potential sponsors. Simil uh, similarly, the Office of Homeland Security has ended familial DNA testing at the southern border. I don't know why you do that. Uh, further reports show Secretary Becerra personally pushed for faster processing and discharging of unaccompanied minors to the detriment of the children's safety, pressuring staff at ORR to treat UAS processing like a factory. The secretary was quoted as saying, if, if Henry Ford had seen this in his plants, he would never become famous and rich. This is not the way you do an assembly line. When asked about those comments, an HHS spokesman stated he wouldn't hesitate to do it again. Mr. Law, do you believe the administration's policies, such as those I described, have created a humanitarian crisis among minors coming across our southern border? Thank you. So I would say it's not just uh isolated to the minors, it's, it's everyone. There's not a single illegal alien that makes it across the southern border without having to pay debts to the cartels and human traffickers. The exploitation begins the moment they get into that connection. It goes throughout the entire journey. And, it, and in many cases, like especially with the unaccompanied alien children, the exploitation continues once the, this administration quickly releases them to their traffickers. So in other words, if a 15-year-old crosses the southern border, how much do you think they're on the hook for with the cartels, you think? Uh, my understanding, it varies uh, depending on where, what, part of the country, what part of the world you are from. But uh, at the end of the day, most of these people are coming from um, far poorer countries in the United States, and these debts are you know, in the five to $20,000 range money that they do not have. And the only way that you pay that back is through um, you know, sex, slavery, uh, worker, indentured servitude, things of that nature. Uh, it's really horrific. Caseworkers at uh, Office of Refugee Resettlement claim HHS regularly ignored obvious signs of labor exploitation, including red flags such as single sponsors sponsoring multiple UACs, Hot spots in the country where most uh, unaccompanied minor sponsors are not the children's parents and even direct reports of trafficking. Do you believe, Mr. Law, that HHS and ORR turned a blind eye to signs of unaccompanied minor exploitation to maintain good optics for their agencies? Well, having not, not been there, it's hard to know if they're turning a blind eye, but it, one thing that is absolutely clear is that the sheer volume is unsustainable. This is an administration that is trying to process and manage its way through the border crisis it created, and you just cannot do it. Uh, and so whether they're turning a blind eye intentionally or just the fact that they are overwhelmed, at the end of the day, they are streamlining the release of unaccompanied alien children to unvetted sponsors, and, and frankly, that seems to be a highly irresponsible decision. This is exponentially higher than it was two years at this time. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Um, do you believe their policies are what's causing so many people to come here, including so many minors to come here? Well, of course, open borders is a great business model for the cartels and the traffickers, which is why um, you know human smuggling and trafficking has turned into a multi-billion dollar industry. Uh, as I've uh, mentioned repeatedly, there are no enforcement policies on the books. Uh, all they're doing is trying to funnel illegal immigration to the ports of entry, claiming that that's lawful. It's not. And then they're trying to hide those who would otherwise ac across the border um, by paroling them, which basically means if you have an international airport, you're a border state because they're just being flown I, I'll in. I'll ask you, how do these people find out about it? Okay, if I'm in Bangladesh, if I'm in... Uh, uh, Nigeria, how would I find out that the U.S. border is essentially open? Uh, a combination of things. Uh, those who came before you successfully got in, uh, have been released quickly, um, have reunited with other family members, working, et cetera. And then the cartels, they're highly sophisticated. They're well aware of the policies. That's why you saw a slight blip uh, in border crossings after Title 42 ended. It <clears throat> Even their blip was the worst recorded times. 
Uh, and then they saw, no, there's actually Are no enforcement. Are they advertising for people to come here illegally around the world? Uh, the cartels, absolutely. And they are using a lot of the social media platforms to do so. Okay, thank you.